Okay. With you recording it, um, will we be able to go back and look at it? Like, are you going to upload it into the online things? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, for one, uh, I'm not sure. It's kind of we've we've already did linear. Okay, that's somebody's got a mic on this drive me crazy. So let me it's mute. Mine, mine. It's okay. I'm gonna. I hear a little rumbling and everything, so it's coming through in the back. Let me just mute it and then I'll open it back up. Okay, so it's no problem. All right. So uh, here we go. Um, Linear functions is is kind of repeated. We've already have uh, went over linear functions, uh, but four one kind of deals with with everything that we've covered. So it's a little bit uh, it's an opportunity to come in and go, okay, this is familiar content, and we can, and you you really can kind of get your legs underneath you from an understand standing standing point and. Um, and kind of go from there. All right, so linear functions are going to be in the form of uh, f of x equals mx plus b. Now, you should know that that's really um, y equals mx plus b, right? f of x and y are the same thing because of function notation. Uh, b is the initial value, right? We've already looked at that. Uh, or the y-intercept, correct? So... We're going to look at increasing and decreasing functions, and basically, if your slope is uh, is positive, it increases, and if your slope is negative, it decreases. And if your slope is zero, then it's a uh, horizontal line, right? So those are things that we've already discussed, already kind of went over, and stuff like that. So. Just kind of make sure that you are uh, back aware on that. So turn that. So any questions about that? I turned you back on for a second. You good? I'm good. Yep. Okay. Uh, slope. We've used slope before. We know how to calculate slope. So we're going to do some that have slope. Okay. Um, point slope form. I'm pretty sure that I, yeah, I'm pretty sure that I've showed y'all point slope form as far as taking a point, a slope, and then substituting them in, and then you're able to put it back in a, a slope intercept form. So uh, we're going to use that. Um, now, here's the first couple problems uh, that we have, and, and it's going to give you a mixture of um, different equations. And they want you to determine whether the equation of the curve can be written as a linear function. Well, if you if you remember, y equals mx plus b, uh, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and then uh, ax plus by equals c. Those are the three forms of a linear equation. And note that all of the powers have to be a 1, okay? With, res with respect to the y and the x, they all – both of them have to be a power of 1 for it to be a linear. So if we're looking at this, guys, this is this is nothing more than a slope-intercept form, right? So the, the answer for this would be, yeah, this equation can be written as a linear function, right? So any questions about that? No. All right. Well, the next couple problems will kind of make a little bit more sense as far as how they kind of get into can you do this, can you put it in linear function, so forth. So let's kind of look at that. All right, so determine whether the equation can be written as a linear function. And the answer to this one is no, and the reason why is because of that power. See, we have a power of 1 on the y right here, but we have a power of 2 on the x. So really, that's a quadratic, right? Okay. Um, well, my drawing abilities are kind of crazy. Um, so what we have is no because the power is two. Any questions about that? Um, so most, most quadratics – hold up. Let me write this. 
or be in this form y equals ax squared plus bx and you see the two right there all right you can go ahead so anytime that there is a power that like anytime there's a power other than one or nothing it can't be well everything has a power if you look right here yeah. this y right here even though there's no power written, it's understood to be a power of one, right? Because you're seeing one thing. Yeah. So okay. just kind of make sure so anything higher anything higher than the first power is can't be. That's exactly right. That's correct. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Any anybody else got any questions on this problem? Y'all good? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do you you okay? Yeah, I'm good. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Maria, yeah, yeah. you good? All right. So let's look at this one. Um, it looks crazy, uh, but um, we're going to manipulate it. It says determine whether the equation of the curve can be written as a linear function. And if it can, write it as it. Well, we've got uh, – x to the first power and y is to the first power, right? So, okay, that's the qualifications. Now, let's put it in this form, y equals mx plus b. And in doing so, if I were to um, basically, all right, so it's x minus 3 all over 5, right? Mm -hmm. So just to kind of make things a little bit easier what i'm going to do is this i'm going to multiply both sides by five and what this is going to do is it's going to cancel here and it's going to leave me with x minus three equals to 25 y and in doing that it's going to make a little bit more sense and a little bit easier representation to, to so that i can put it into whatever form I want to. Well, really slope intercept form, but anyway. So I have x minus 3 over 25. Now if I divide both sides by 25, I'm going to – this becomes 1, right? So I'll put the y here. Then it's really 1 25th x minus 3 over 25. And they're probably going to want you to split it like that. So let me take – this this way just so you can kind of see x minus 3 over 25 equals y and then I split it right and I just put the y on left hand side any questions on that I think that's a little bit easier presentation than having to divide everything by 5 which would have you know made your denominator 25 but you can see it a little bit easier if you just multiply both sides by 5 and then divide by 25. So any questions on that? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Um, all right. So determine whether the function is increasing or decreasing. So they're leaving the part on can you – can you determine if this is a linear function or not? Okay. Now we're going over increase or decrease. And so if you look at this, I'm going to rewrite this as y equals 5 minus 5x. And if I rewrite it again, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it to that. And if you look at it, you know that your slope is negative 5. Okay. Now, that would mean that because it's a negative slope, it is decreasing, right? If it was positive okay. slope, it'd be increasing. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions on this? This stuff really should be, I hate to say easier, but you've already been exposed to it. So it's going to. It's going to make a little bit more sense. Uh, you're going to mm -hmm. feel comfortable with the content that we're going over, okay? So would it be safe to assume that any time the slope is a negative number, it's going to be decreased? Like, no, that's a hundred percent safe assumption. Okay. Yeah. 
If it was positive, then it would go uphill, increasing. Negative is downhill. And, and so, what of, would give you a constant? Yeah. Okay. So this is positive. This is negative. That's supposed to be a straight vertical line. And then there. A constant would mean it's a slope of zero. It'd be a horizontal line, okay. right? And this would be okay. a vertical line would be a slope that is undefined, right? Mm -hmm. Which would be zero over X. No. No, it wouldn't. No, you wouldn't have an equation. You, your equation would look like this. It'd be x equals 3 for undefined, which is vertical line, and then uh, y equals uh, whatever number. It doesn't really matter, like 3 for horizontal line, which would cross 3 on the y-axis, and then this would cross 3 on the x-axis, right? So okay. the equations for uh, – Horizontal line and vertical lines are different than, remember, they're the exceptions. They're different from y yeah. equals mx plus b. So I'd, I'd have those on a thing. All right, let me do this. All right, I, I muted y'all. I'm getting a lot of background noise. Somebody's moving, kind of getting it a little – all right, so um, I'll open it back up here in a second. This is already in y equals one fourth x minus four. I'm just changing fx into y so that you can see because those are the same. And because this is positive, it is a positive, so it, it would be going up from left to right, which means it would be increasing. So any questions about that? Everybody good? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. So it, it, we're going to look at all the tables, and we're going to um, determine which ones are linear. So we've got four tables here that we've got to go through and look at it. So I'm going to do each one, and then I'll ask you at the end, do you – agree with what I've got or do you disagree um, I tell you what I'm gonna do I'm going to uh, just for grins and giggles um, I'm gonna hit pause and I'm gonna let you do the first two okay just the first two and then we'll compare answers okay and then we'll work the last two fair enough yep okay so I'm gonna give you um, Probably about two minutes to work that, okay? So I'm going to hit pause on the recording so you're not dead time for two minutes. Okay, so let's kind of look at this. This is kind of how I'm doing mine. Here's changing X. Here's changing Y. You've got to kind of look at the change in the table. And I mean, you could pick two points, but then you'd have to check. You'd have to do four calculations. So this is just a little bit easier. Um if the number's going up as you're progressing, then that's positive change. If the number's going down, decreasing, then it's negative change for that particular component, whether it's change in X or change in Y. So if I'm looking at this, 0 to 5 is 5, 5 to 10 is 5, 10 to 15 is 5. So I'm good. You know, Everything's staying constant on the change in X. Now when I go to 9 to 34, what is that? Let's see, 25? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. All right, so 34 to 109, what is that, 75? Yeah, right? No. 90? Mm. 75. Hang on. I think it's 75. It's 75. And then what is that? Uh, a 125? 125. Okay. All right, so if I, if I look at these, if I go, okay, if I take the first two, which is 25 over 5, right, that gives me 5. But if I look at the second one go 75 over 5, that only gives me what? What is that, 12, 13? 25. 15? 15. Yeah. Oh, wow. 
Yeah. So, <clears throat> and I can see because my X values remain constant, if I got a different Y, then I can say, okay, not linear, right? I just wanted to kind of pull out some of these pairs. And do you see what I mean as pairs? We go here. I took those. And then these become a, you know, one that I'm going to look at. And then if I need to, I can look at the bottom one, right? So that's kind of what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, all right. Any questions on that one? You all good? No. All right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do it again. I'll go change in X, change in Y. So if I'm looking at my X's, you can very quickly see, hey, nothing changed. Everything went up by fives, all right? So it's really mm -hmm. if my Y's go up by the, a, a constant amount, then I can say, okay, it's going to be linear. So that would be 25, and that would be what? 25? 25. And this is what? 25. 25. Okay, so if I if I look at all these, I can see that my Ys are constant and my Xs are constant as far as the change. Uh, so it's going to be linear. But if I were to take each one and go, okay, it's 25 over 5, 25 over 5, and 25 over 5, then my when I reduce my fraction, I get a 5, 5, and a 5. They're all the same. It is linear, right? So you don't really have to do this part over here if you don't <clears throat> if you don't need to, but it's it's a really good way to check things, okay? Because sometimes they will throw curveballs at you, so you want to make sure that you are um, confident in what you're saying is linear or not. So with that understanding and how I've worked those, what I want you to do is I want you to do the last two, okay? All right. So I'm going to hit pause, and you can take two minutes to do the last two. Go. We're going to go ahead and get started back on this when I turn everybody back on uh, their mics. So I'm looking at change in X and then change in Y. So uh, 0 to 5, 5, 10, 10, 15. Again, they're all 5, so all of my change when it comes to my X's are, are the same, which I, that is good. If I can get all my Y's to be the same, then I know it's definitely linear. So from 9 to negative 1 happens to be negative 10. Negative 1 to negative 11 happens to be 10 spaces, but you're going down the number line, so therefore it would be a negative 10. And then, of course, there. So if you were to look at this, all of my change in my Y's are constant. All of my change in X is constant. So if I went and said, okay, Negative 10 over 5, negative 10 over 5, I get negative 2 for every one of these. So, yeah, it's linear. Okay. <coughs> now, let's look at the, the bottom one here. Um, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go change in X, change in Y. So, I'll go 5. Ooh, 10 to 20 is 10, okay, and then a 5 here, and then 13 to 23 is 10, 23 is 20, and then there it goes back 10. So uh, before you you do this, they're, they're throwing a, a slider at you, okay, and this is why I kind of wrote these out. So always double check, 10 over 5, 20 over 10. And 10 over 5. I have all of these written out. So this simplifies down to 2. 20 over 10 simplifies down to 2. And 10 over 5 simplifies down to 2. So if you're looking at all these, even though um, this, man, I wish I had my, I'll go up here and do it. Even though these were different. It still simplified down to what it was uh, originally supposed to be, which is two. Okay, so let me do this. All right. So, any questions about that? You I'm good. good. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Just make sure that <laughs> if they are different, that you list them out and and simplify it to see if they are going to be the same. Okay. That's just a rule of thumb. Just something to kind of keep things uh, correct for you. All right. So 
this one says find the sloping line in the graph. All right, so what I'm looking at is this. Um, I always put a point, and if you look at the y-axis, uh, it crosses at a perfect grid mark right there. Um, just wanted to highlight it for you. So I'm going to put a little dot right there because it crossed now all I have to do is I can go up the line which is probably more advantageous um, or I could go down the line but I'm I'm just getting a habit of going up the line so I'm I'm going up the line to find the next crossing where it crosses perfectly on a grid meaning where these grids meet like right there it crossed good it crossed good right there right there Right there, I only need one of them, okay? And in doing that, what you're going to see is this. I'm going to do up and over. So my change in Y, I went up one, and I went over to the right one, and that would be my change in X. So if you look at slope, that's change in Y over change in X. That's really one over one, right? So, and... You get the sign from how is the line, is it increasing or decreasing? So the sign for this would be a positive. So my slope would be 1. Now, if I did another one, if I said, okay, I want to, maybe I didn't grab that first point. What if I grab this point up here? Let's kind of go, I want to kind of show you. If I grabbed up here, I'm making like a triangle. So if I start here, I go 1, 2, 3, so my change in Y was 3, and then 1, 2, 3, my change in X is 3. And if you look at that, 3 over 3 is nothing more than 1, right? So you don't have to get the next perfect grid as long as you just get another perfect grid, and then it will simplify to be the same, okay? This is positive because it's going uphill. It's increasing. Uh, if it was negative, then it would be going downhill, but you have to look at the graph in order to determine whether it's a positive slope or a negative slope, okay? Questions? Everybody good with that? Yeah. Okay. All right. So find the slope and line of this one. Okay, first off, you ought to know that this is a special case, right? And there's only two special cases. So, um, yeah, so um, I got your message. So uh, I want you to take kind of 10 seconds to see if you can determine whether you know what the slope of the line is or not. Okay, so I'm not going to pause it. I'm just going to wait for 10 seconds. Hopefully you're referring back to the slope man and everything. So the slope on this would actually be zero, okay, because it's a horizontal line. But I want you to kind of think about something um, so that if you ever were to ever draw a blank, you can kind of get back to it, okay? So let's, let's see. Let's start here, and let's see. Did I go up any? I didn't go up any, but I did run one, right? I could have ran two or three. It doesn't really matter, but I didn't rise any. So zero over one is zero, right? That's a horizontal line. So that's kind of how that's um, explained or interpreted, okay? So. so it could be really any number on that straight line. Like you could even do a negative number and it'd still be zero. Shoot, yeah. Uh-huh. Because zero divided by any. Excuse me, zero divided by any number is zero. So but the biggest thing is if you were to draw, draw a blank, you know, am I going up any? Am I changing in the Y's? And the answer is no, it's no. zero, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing you could do for a vertical line if you if you had to, right? If I – let me grab this real quick and show you an example of a vertical. Let me get it blue. Let's just kind of do it right here, okay? Uh, if I were to, and I'll switch it to red, ha. Huh. So uh, 
we got a perfect uh, let's just let's just kind of grab here if I am I going up well yeah I'm going at least up one right Now, am I going left or right? Am I moving anywhere? And the answer is no. So when zero is the denominator, it's going to give you an undefined, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the same technique or explanation for a vertical line. So you've got both cases covered there, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, sketch the line given the following features. Uh, they're giving you a wire set and they're giving you a slope, right? So if we look at this, the first thing on drawing a line is pulling these two things out. So we want to kind of put in an equation if I, because it, it's got everything I need for an equation. Here's your y-intercept and here's your slope. So if we're thinking about this, you know, they gave it to us already. But if they were to give it to us like this, then we could say slope is negative 5 over 3 and that the y-intercept is negative 1. Now, we talked about the wire set being the starting point. That's where I start my graphs off every single time. So what that means is I'll go to negative 1, and I'll put a dot, okay, because that's a point on the y-axis. That's what the wire set right here is telling you. Now, the slope here, m equals negative 5 over 3, what that's telling you is if it was a positive, it would go up. If it's a negative, you'll go down, but you'll always go to the right, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down 5, all right? So if I'm here on negative 1, so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I'm going to go right 3. 1, 2, 3, and that's where I end up at, okay? And doing that... I only need two points for a line, right? So I've got two points, and it'll draw a line. Now, if I were to ever run off the uh, graph, like if it, let's just say it stopped at negative 5 right here, stopped here, and I wasn't able to go down 5. All I have to do, if I, if I put this notation here, then it's telling me how I need to go, which is down and then to the right. If I ever need to reverse it to go the opposite way, then I would reverse these. I would go up and to the left. And in doing that, let me show what I'm talking about. I still start at negative 1, so I'd go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then then 1, 2, 3. Okay? And if you see that, I change both of these directions because I'm still wanting that line to be negative because it's a negative slope. All right? So this is why I do the arrows ne down is negative up is positive and if you go right you'll never go wrong okay so that's on initial slopes if I ever have to change direction to go the opposite way then I've got them and I just change my arrows both of them and it'll it'll end up at the right place any questions on that one you okay on that most of yeah. the time you should be by now if you went through, you, you know how to graph a linear equation, but that's kind of a, a review. All right, so if it said sketch, sketch the graph of the equation below, all right, first off, tell me how many variables do you see? Just one. one. That's right. So you only see one variable, right? So that's a big indicator. Wait, I've got a special case, okay? And now, which special case do I have? Well, the equation is x equals negative 1, right? Well, the variable tells you what axis, okay? And the number says where on that axis. So I need the x-axis at negative 1, right? So I'll put a dot. Well, there's only one. Um, line, special case, that would cross the x-axis 100% of the time, and that would be a um, vertical line, okay?
and there you go. So the special cases when it comes to a horizontal or vertical, they're really the easiest, but we just don't get exposed to them enough. So I would really, really recommend doing a, uh, a little note card that I kept for linear that had the special cases on there, vertical and horizontal, what their slopes are, what the equation looks like, and kind of um, – I would, de I would say deconstructing what the equation really is, okay? That would be beneficial for a quick, quick reference, okay? Any questions? I'm good. Okay. All right. Um, all right, we'll go to the next one. All right, so this one says find the x, y intercepts of the equation. Uh, it's basically in standard form, okay, which means it's AX plus BY equals C. Um, so I'm going to show you how to, I teach this. So if I want the X-intercept, then Y is zero, right? Let me back up one thing I want to show you. The X-intercept is where the point is on the X-axis, right? And if you're looking, I'm just going to grab this graph for just for teaching purposes. If you're looking at this, the value of y is zero, right? If I have a point on the x-axis. And in retrospect to that, if I have a point on the y-axis, my value of x happens to be zero. All right? So I'm going to take that knowledge, and now I'm going to apply it to give me this statement. X-intercept, I know my y is zero, right? My y has to be a zero for there to be a point on the x-axis. If I looked at it as an ordered pair, all right? So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say, okay, 4x minus 3 times 0 equals 36. I'm going to place in the 0 in for the variable that I've, I've got it indicated for. So 4x equals 36. Turn around and divide by 4. Then that gives me the x-intercept equals 9. Now, that's just not 9. That's 9 comma 0 because it is a point, right? So my x-intercepts, 9 comma 0. Now, I'm going to give you this statement. Y-intercept, x equals 0. Okay? So I need you to take that information and see if you can take the equation. Here's the equation. And then see if you can find the y intercept from that, okay? I'm going to hit pause. I'll give you about, uh, about 20 seconds. I'm going to hit pause on that one to have uh, looked at this and came up with this okay so I'm going to place the x in or zero in for x which would give me uh, four times zero zero so that's negative three y equals 36 and of course we're solving for y the y-intercept so divide by negative three so the y-intercept equals negative 12 right which would be 0 comma negative 12 if you look at it um, clean this up right here there so in this answer it would be because they've already formatted or have the zeros in there then I'll, that's all you have to do all right any questions on that anybody you all good with that so these are just like, like there's nothing special about these. We don't have to try to figure out the, um, we don't have to graph anything. It's just basically figure out the y, x and y intercept. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. They okay. may, well, on yeah, they may, you, to, you can go ahead and put me on mute. I just, I'll follow up on this. They may okay. um, ask you. I can't remember what the questions look like. Yes, but they're X and Y intercepts. They may ask you to find the X and Y intercept and then graph it. If they did, 
then all you would do is find the x y intercept and put a dot at 9 on the x intercept and a dot at negative 12 on the y and then you'd have your line so that's basically the only thing that they could ask you okay so all right so um given information find a linear equation satisfying the conditions if possible if not enter d and e okay so they're giving you x intercept and a y intercept and they want you to write the linear equation okay so what you have to understand is they're giving you two ordered pairs so if i look at that i can make this x1 y1 this x2 y2 and if i look at slope then this is kind of what i'm going to do i'm going to say uh, 0 minus minus 3 over no sorry I grabbed I grabbed the wrong ones so let me start that back over um, I need the y so that would be negative 2 minus 0 over now I can grab this 0 minus negative 3 so make sure you grabbing the x's for the x's and the y's for the y not do the simple mistake that I've done, which is really the most common mistake. So negative 2 minus 0 is still negative 2. And then 0 minus negative 3, this, when you subtract a negative, it becomes a positive. So your slope happens to be negative 2 thirds. Now, um, make sure that one, your signs are good. So a negative divided by a positive is overall negative. So that checks out. And then look at your fraction and make sure that it is um, simplified. You wouldn't want something like six ninths or something like that. Okay. Now, so we're going to write it y equals mx plus b, right? We're going to put it in this form. Um, you have the y intercept right here, zero, negative two. So the answer is really negative two thirds x minus two. But I'm going to take this opportunity to kind of give you an example of writing it in slope intercept form with point slope. Okay, so we're just going to, and I'm going to show you that we're going to use, um, we're going to use y intercept, right? So we're going to, I mean, not y intercept, we're going to use this negative three. Doesn't really matter which one we're going to choose, but we're going to, we're going to use this point. I could use that one. It doesn't really matter. But so it's y minus zero equals negative two thirds um, x minus three, right? Well, it would be x plus three, right? If that's a negative, when you put it in here, it should become a positive. And if we distribute this, that would give me negative two thirds x. Negative two times three is negative six, and negative six divided by three is negative two. And you see that this right here just becomes y equals. Okay, so you can take negative two thirds times three on your calculator, and you'll get negative two. So I showed you both ways. One. Uh, using the information because it gave you the wire set and then to take an opportunity to show you how to use the point slope form again so any questions on that everybody good I'm good okay thank you uh, make sure this right yeah okay check my chat all right so <clears throat> We're getting just about done with this little section right here. Um, they want us to determine, um, find find the slope of line A. Okay, here's line A. Uh, oh, wait, wait, let me read this. Find the slope of a line that's one, parallel to what's up here, and then two, what's perpendicular. So the first thing's first. It's in uh, standard form which means it's AX plus BY equals C. It's in that general form. If I move my 
4x over to the other side. It's negative 4x. So I move it to the other side. It's going to change sign. So that gives me 4x minus 7. So the slope is 4 over 1, right? Now, if I want a slope that's parallel to this, then the answer is 4 because 4 over 1 is nothing more than 4 because parallel lines have the, the same slope, okay? Now, but if I want one that's perpendicular, then you have to understand that that is the negative reciprocal or opposite reciprocal, which means if this is positive, then this has to be negative. 4 over 1 becomes 1 fourth, okay? So here's an equation. You pull the slope out. You find one that's parallel. And then you find one that is perpendicular. And you should know that parallel lines have the same slope. Okay. Any questions on that? Yes. So if it's a negative one fourth, would like that's essentially saying your rise over run, would that one fourth, would both of those, your one, your rise and your run, would they both be negative? No. That whole fraction is negative. OK, meaning um, if you look at this um, as a decimal, it's negative 0.25, right? If you yeah. if you try to say that it's both negative, then that is positive 0.25. It's going to give you a positive. Yeah. So you only you only have one negative sign show up, and it normally goes with one up top is normally where we put it. And basically because okay. the whole value of that. The value of that fraction happens to be <laughs> negative. So if you were to look at it as a decimal, it would be a negative decimal. Okay. Okay. So if we were to be doing it like if we were to graph this specific one as a perpendicular line, we would go negative one over yeah, I'd four. Go down. I'd go down one and to the right four. To the right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So let me kind of kill that. All right, so determine whether the lines given by the equation are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So what I want you to do is to take these two. You need to find the slope. Okay, so you need to find the slope of the first one. I'm going to call it M1. Okay, so this is line one, and then this one's line two. So you need to find the slopes of those, and we have to determine whether they're parallel perpendicular or neither okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you about two minutes to uh, to compute the slope move everything over in slope intercept form that's probably the easiest thing to do and then you've got your slope and then you can compare okay so I'm going to mute I'm going to start working the first one out so if you're still working on this just kind of check your answers as I'm going I got 4y plus 3x equals 12, so I'll minus, wait, my bad, jump the gun there. I'll minus the 3x. They kind of switched the variables around, so I'm just kind of used to always moving the first one, but it happened to be the y. Um, and then we'll divide by 4. Okay. So what that's going to give me is y equals negative 3 over 4x plus 3. Okay, so the slope for the first one is negative 3 over 4. Now, we look at the second one, and we'll go negative 12y equals 9x plus 8. And then we'll divide both sides by negative 12. So it gives me y equals um, I'm going to write it like this for just simplistic purposes. All right. So I'm not done with it, okay? I'm just a positive divided by negatives and negative. So my negatives don't go in the bottom. They go up top. Um, but now I need to simplify my fraction, which would give me negative. That would be 3 force x minus... Uh, that would give me two thirds. So the slope for the second one is negative three fourths. So these are the 
same, so therefore they would equal parallel lines. Okay, any questions on that? Y'all good on that? So, do you, you good? so well, the <laughs> sorry, y'all. The no, the because your negative was on the bottom. Did you just move it on the top, just as the simple rule of it doesn't go on the bottom? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. okay, what you have is you have um, <clears throat> a positive divided by a negative, which means the overall value of that number is a negative value, which means that we mm -hmm. either put it out to the side or up top, never in the bottom. Okay, that's kind of how the mathematical community is, is kind of standardized that. So, all right, so all you're okay. doing is changing it back in slope intercept form and then comparing. Okay, that's all you're doing. If these do not meet one being the same slopes, okay, uh, that would mean they're not parallel. If they were not negative reciprocals of one another, then they would not be um, um perpendicular so in this case they're they're neither all right so all right so we don't have one yeah just two more so says write equation of a line parallel to this equation but passes through this point well i'm going to do this one i'll let you do the next one so this is really y equals negative 5x plus 3 because fx and y are the same. So I just kind of want to reiterate that every single time. Uh, now the slope for this one is negative 5 over 1, right? Okay, which is nothing more than negative 5. But I wanted to represent as a fraction so that you can see that slopes need to be um, – when you pull a slope out, consider it as a fraction. OK, because you may have to graph it and you're if you get in the practice of doing that, then it's easier to transition to uh, other things. OK, so my slope is negative five and then now I have a point. So that's going to be y minus y one equals m times x minus x one. And what we have here is this. We have point slope form because we have a point and a slope. OK. Right in purple. I haven't done that. So when you take your X and your Y here and plug it into this point slope form, you have to understand that your sign is going to change. And it's because of the minus Y1 and minus X1 here. So what that's going to leave me is this. Y plus 21 equals negative 5 times X minus 4. Okay. That was positive 4. It's a negative 4 in the equation. Negative 21 became a positive 21. So now that we've got that, then we can proceed on and distribute, which is going to give me a negative 5x plus 20. And then on the right-hand side is y plus 21. And then I would subtract 21. So that's y equals negative 5x minus 1, and that would be what the answer is, y equals negative 5x minus 1, because they want us to make it parallel, right? So therefore, the slopes had to be the same. Any questions about that? Slopes have to be the same? For parallel lines, yes. Okay. Slopes have to be the same for parallel lines. Okay. Okay, um, let's look at the next one. The next one is they want us to write the equation of the line that's perpendicular to this but passes through those points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you about a, uh, about a minute head start, and then I'm going to uh, start teaching it. So um, go ahead and proceed with that. I'm going to hit pause real quick. So here we go. If we're needing the line that is um, writing an equation of a line that's perpendicular to the to given equation fx equals negative 4x plus 5, but passes through negative 4, 4, then what we need to understand is I need to pull 
the uh, slope out of this, which would be negative 4 over 1, right? And we're going to say that slope m1. Now, I'm going to write an equation, so I'll call it slope m2, right, the second line. That is perpendicular. And because it's perpendicular, this would mean that I need to do the negative or opposite reciprocal. So if that's negative, then this slope down here has to be positive. No, no doubts about that, okay? And then the reciprocal of that would be one-fourth. Now I can take y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 and do the same thing that I just done on the previous problem, which is this. Um, substitute the values in, making sure that if it's a positive point, that it becomes a negative. That's my y coordinate, right? And my x coordinate was a negative. When I plugged it in, it became a positive. Now if I distribute, that gives me 1 fourth x. 1 fourth times 4 is nothing more than 1. Okay, so I have the y minus 4 over on the other side, and I'm going to add 4, and that's going to give me y equals 1 fourth x plus 5. Okay, so that would be the equation that is perpendicular to the one here, but passes through negative 4, 4. Okay. There you go. Any questions about that? Y'all good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to do you good. You've just been quiet. I know you're there, but just kind of. I'm good. All right. A lot of this, guys, in this 4 1, this, this chapter 4, first section, um, is. Like I said, it's it's mostly a review of linear equations, okay? So slopes, comparing slopes, determining if uh, if things are linear or not, and then writing equations, all right? So uh, that's it on 4.1. Uh, the uh, next section that we have is 4.2, and it, get, it gets into uh, word problems. So I'm going to... Uh, Go to the next thing. So let me let me do this real quick. Um, there. Um, so four two modeling linear equations or linear functions. Okay. When we're looking at modeling, we're going to look at their word problems. Okay. So they're either going to give you an input, which is an X value, and ask for an output, or they'll give you an output, which is a Y value, and ask for the input. So if you remember, like we did a couple of sections ago, we did that, excuse me, on um, looking at equations, looking at tables, and also looking at graphs, giving you inputs and asking for outputs or giving you output a Y value and asking for an X, okay? So just kind of want to make sure we're still in it. Well, now we're just doing word problems, 4-2. Um, we're going to identify inputs and outputs, identify the slopes and wire steps and stuff like that. So it's kind of, all right. Uh, let me kind of go through here. Yeah. All right. Because there's not but four problems, I think, in here, which means there's probably, it's probably less than 10 problems in that section, period. Okay. Um, so we're looking at the value of a forklift. Now, Elliot buys a new forklift for his business, and it cost $140,000. When he went to buy it, brand new, $140,000, and it will decrease in value each year, hence the graph, right? The graph below shows the value of the forklift after the first six years of ownership. So if we're looking at the X values, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that kind of makes it um, – 
a little bit easier to understand what's going on in the uh, X and Y stuff as far as the axes. Now, so we're going to go through and kind of look at this, and we're going to answer questions. Um, they are – there's yeah, there's about five questions. So first off, it says, how much is the forklift worth after six years? Well, six years, is it an input or an output? We say, guys, what is this six years? Is it an input or an output? That would be an input, right? Yes. Right. So we're going to go here to six, and we're going to go right there, and we can clearly see that that says that the price of it is actually twenty thousand dollars, right? So we kind of we kind of went up here six, went up, and then all the way over, right? And we, it's twenty thousand. Now, any questions on that? It's basically interpreting graphs given the inputs or outputs is basically what you're doing. Part B, after how many years is the forklift worth eighty thousand? Three. So let's go up to eighty thousand and let's just kind of come over and then let's go down. So you'd see that answer is what? Three, because they gave you an output, right? Okay, so just for you to kind of be aware, um, I think this is like, I don't know, two, three sections ago we did this with uh, inputs and outputs, what I'd referenced before, okay? All right, so any questions off the first two? Y'all good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems pretty easy so far. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not bad. Um, now, let's look at um, find the slope of the line. Well, if you look at these, all of these are crossing perfectly, right? So mm -hmm. if I just kind of pick one and then look over and, and make my triangle, I can see that my change in X is 1, right? So if I look at it in slope, that's changing Y over change in X. So my change in X is 1. How much am I decreasing in my Y? And if I look at that, that is 20,000, right? Be 20,000 would be my slope because that's 20. Well, it'd be a negative 20, right? It wouldn't just be positive 20 because that would mean that it's going up in 20,000. So, so since it's like... Basically, the value is like depreciating. That's why it's negative. That's correct. And if you look at your line, do you see how it's decreasing the whole time right yeah. here? So you would know that looking at the line, hey, that's got to be a negative slope, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and 80,000 minus 60,000, it changed 20, right? It went down by 20. So the slope of the line is negative 20,000. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you can't you can't do the usual like count how many spaces you go um like normally on a regular graph. Please quit. Sorry. Um, normally on a regular graph you would go down one over one, down one over one. So that would in a normal graph it would be negative one would be your slope. But because there are different values on the y you get a different value, right? Yeah. And I'm going back on me. Yeah, the the y values are not changing by one. You know, if they were, then it would be negative one, right? Negative one over one, which should just be negative one. But because the y values are changing by twenty thousand, because your scale on your y is going uh, is set up in twenty thousand increments, then that one step down is negative 20,000, right? It's $20,000 going down. So that's why. So just kind of be aware that, okay, even though my X's were ones, they they changed all by as far as my scale. My Y scale does not have to be by ones, okay? And it's probably not if okay. you think about it. Okay, so for whatever our slope, the top number is going to be whatever the value is of the Y. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, okay. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, that's why I put the change in Y over change in X so that you could see. Okay. All right. 
so let me write let me move that all right it says d is nothing more than repeating the answer for c but it's doing it contextually okay so just kind of be aware of this the by how many dollars per year is to decrease the forklift decreasing in value the forklift forklift is decreasing by twenty thousand now i'm going to put a positive here because in contextually when i say decreasing that means that it's going down right that it's a negative slope so so c is that like give me a value but d is tell me contextually what it is and that's the difference between C and D. And then last thing is, guys, we have a slope of negative 20,000. Uh, B happens to be um, your initial value, right? It wants to write an equation. Um, so what is my initial, equa uh, initial value in the beginning? What is my wire intercept? It's where it touches or crosses, right? So it's 100. It's 140,000, right? Mm -hmm. So when doing that, th those are the only two things I need. Um, and they they want us to write it in terms of V and T, right? So value equals negative 20,000 T because time plus 140,000. Um, they – they can write it like that. Sometimes you may see it like this, uh, where they put the uh, um, the wire set first. It's, sometimes they'll do it B plus MX, and then sometimes they'll just keep it as Y equals MX plus B. When you're dealing with word problems, um, both forms are correct. They just normally put it – may put it in form of B plus MX if the slope is negative. It just makes a little bit more sense, right? So – but uh, really probably the blue, if you were to put the black, it should count it correct as well, okay? But definitely make sure you have V equals and using T and not Y and X. I, I know we're so ingrained and entrenched in doing Y equals MX plus B using Y and X, but when they change it on us, that's the one thing that um, we tend to get tripped up on. Now, don't – you know, you're going to have to fix it if you're doing a homework, right? But if you get to a test and that's the only thing's wrong with it, I'm going to give you back full credit, okay? Mm -hmm. So – I had a question here. Yeah, the answer would be blue. That's traditionally how it's written in terms of Y equals MX plus B. I'm just saying sometimes uh, if they were to ever give you a linear equation and have you evaluate it and the slope is negative, don't be surprised that you see it. Oh, let me do that. Shoot. You may see it in this form right here where they put the B first plus MX. So I just wanted to kind of make you aware of that uh, so that you're not tripped up. If they ever did, it, that's – it's legit, okay? Um, yeah, either way would be correct. We're, we're just more familiar with the blue, all right? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect you in college algebra to put the black. Now, if we were in a mathematical modeling class, then, um, yeah, that's that's traditionally how – when you're doing strictly word problems, that's traditionally how you would write it, okay? Because contextually, that makes sense, 140,000 minus 20,000 times the years, okay? So it's it's more of what math are you taking, okay? Um, so we're done with that one. Let's look at the next one if, if there's no questions. Everybody good? Mm-hmm. All right. Yes. All right. Um, okay. This question, excuse me, has multiple parts, but it's asking simple little questions. And I hate to say simple. 
it's asking questions that the answers are going to be put together to provide answers for the ones below. So in 2004, a school's population was 946. In 2008, the population had grown to 1,598. Assuming that the population ch is changing linearly, meaning every year it's going up by the same amount, <clears throat> Then please answer the questions. So first things first, um, 2004 and 946, right? 2008 and 1598. Those are really ordered pairs, okay? So you really got to think about that. Anytime they give you four bits of information and they're uh, in groups of two, and what I mean by groups of two, um, that there's – Pairs of information, so if you have like two dates and I have two populations, right, that correspond those, to those two dates, then I would know that those are ordered pairs. Now that I've got it as an ordered pair, now I can do anything I want to. So it says, how much did the population grow between the year 2004 and 2008? Well, basically, all that is is 1598 minus 946, right? So, what is that? 652. 652? All yes, right. sir. So, that's 652, right? That's to mm -hmm. change in Y if you're thinking about it. How much did the population grow? It, it went up by 652. So, that's really what that is saying, okay? Now, how long did it take for the population to grow from 946 to 1598? So that's really 2008 minus 2004, which is nothing more than four years, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's really changing X. All right. Any questions about that? Those two questions are helping you to identify what is the change in Y and what is the change in X. Okay. So the next question says, what is the average population growth per year? Well, guys, that's nothing more than slope. That's 652 over 4. I know it's a positive slope because the population went up between those years, right? It grew 652 students. So all I have to do is just say 652 divided by 4. Will that fraction simplify? What do you mean? I got 163. Yeah, what, I, what I'm saying is 652 over 4, if you were to simplify that fraction, it would give you 163, right? Over 1. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so I it's five every – huh? I, don't, I thought something different. I thought you meant like, like actually simplify it, like leave it like – I don't know. I don't know what I thought. I divided it, though, and I, I got that. <laughs> okay. Um, it's okay. Um, all right. So every year, <coughs> excuse me, because it's linear, this population is going up by 163 students, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's kind of look at Sun. They want Part D, and Part D says, what will the population be in 2000? Okay. Well, they only gave us 2004 to 2008, right? So what mm -hmm. I want to do is I want to pause it for about 30 seconds, 30, 45 seconds. I want you to determine how you would drive at what the population would be in the year 2000. Because they only gave us 2004 and 2008, right? Mm -hmm. but they did tell us how much it's changing by. So I'm going to let let it pause. And I'm going to give you about 45 seconds to uh, come up with that. And then two, once you come up with that, think about how you would write an equation. Okay, so those both of those things. Okay, there you go. Okay, so with those discussions, that's kind of a sidebar. Let's kind of look at this. Um, you can take 2004, which was 900. Let me write this. 946 was 2004, right? 
and you can go 2003, 2002, can scroll down a little bit, 2001 and 2000, right? And what you can do is you can subtract 168 people every time, right? And you can come all the way down. You can do that for every year, right? All the way down to you get what the value is, correct? But here's a question. We can really do this a little bit quicker. 2004 minus 2000 is how many years? Four. Four years, right? So it's four years. So if I go four times 168, that gives me what? What is four times 168? Is that 652? 652. Ha, 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 ha. So that's 652, right? Now, we're at 946. So if I go 946 minus 652, that gives me a bar 294. there. 294, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. So I've got 294 students, and that's what you would get if you were to list it out like a table like that and um, go back through. Or you can say, okay, it's four of them, um, and it's moving 168 by year, uh, 168 per year. So four times that, give me 652. Just subtract it, okay, from the um, – from what I've got now so the equation would actually be find the equation that was years after 2000 okay and what they're wanting you to do is and really that's why they want you to find that is because that would be your starting value because write it in terms of t years after 2000 so it would be p sub t equals 163 t three plus plus Two hundred ninety four. Okay, so that would give me the equation. So, any questions? Any questions on that? No, I felt good about that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah, coming back through. I'm coming back through feedback on somebody's mic so I'm just going to kind of mute it uh, you can click on it uh, and come back in it's you know you can un you can click and unmute yourself okay so it's or you can do a chat doesn't really matter so just kind of want you to be aware of that all right so next thing I'm going to do and I'm going to erase this because I need some room is we've there they're asking me a, a question here of using your equation, predict the population of school in 2011. Okay, well, two, from 2000 up to 2011 is 11 years, right? So my T would equal 11. So I would go 163 times 11 plus 294. And in doing that, let's see what I've got. I'm going to calculator up. 163 times 11 is, um, just so you can have this number, plus 294. That would give me a population of 2,087 students. So we're okay with that. Okay with that. So basically, E is just setting up for P for F. Mhm. Mm That's exactly correct. That's exactly correct. Okay. Yeah, I'm good on that. All right. Anybody else? All right. Um, the next problem is this um, so what we're going to do and I just muted everybody so if you does everybody see where you can go and unmute if you need to um, mm -hmm. okay um, 
So a college student earns $30 per day delivering advertising brochures door to door, right? Plus 25 cents for each student or each person he interviews. How many people did he interview on a day if he earned $39? So let's kind of look at this. Earned equals um, base pay plus uh, dollars each person, right? Let's write that a little bit better. So our base pay was $39. Well, not base pay, sorry. He earned $39. He got a base pay of $30. If he didn't hit nobody whatsoever, if he didn't pass out any brochures to anybody, he made $30, right? So he can earn – excuse me. He can earn a lot more money if he's passing these brochures out. And that happens to be 25 cents, right, for every person. So how many people did he interview? It's basically solve the equation. So that's $9 equals 0.25x, ladies and gentlemen. That should be x equals, if you take 9 divided by 0.25, you should get 36. So he interviewed, interviewed 36 people, right? So y'all okay yeah. with that? Y'all okay with that? Yeah. All right. So that's how that problem works. And I kind of just wrote it out. If you – here's the big hint. When you get to a word problem, if you just kind of – remember, these are linear, linear, right? So it comes out with some starting point and then some increase in amount, or they'll give you two sets of data that are the same set, kind of like on the previous problem where they gave us how much population in, in years. Um, so just kind of uh, – excuse me. Write it out, and you'll be okay. Uh, earned equals base pay plus twenty five or dollars per each person, and then thirty nine equals thirty plus point two five x solve for x, and you got thirty six people. All right. So this is the last problem within four two. We um, this is not bad. It's a little bit. You got to look at some things. So the average fixed cost or the restaurant has a fixed cost of $141 per day, okay? It has to make $141 a day That because that's what it's – it's just come in, turn the lights on, open the doors, and say we're open. It's going to cost us $141. Okay, If not, we're going to be in the hole, and we won't be all open as a restaurant for long. Okay, the average unit cost of a meal is three dollars and fifty cents. Okay, so ingredients and manpower to make that meal is three dollars and fifty cents. If a typical meal costs five dollars, how many customers must eat at the restaurant each day for the owner to break even? So, um, so what we have to understand is let's kind of. We need to look at profit per meal, right? And the profit per meal is this. It costs – well, I'm selling it at $5, right? I'm selling it at $5, and it costs me $3.50 to make. So for every person that I'm selling a meal to, a customer, I'm making a dollar and a half in profit, right? Okay, so – they want to know how many customers must eat at the restaurant for the owner to break even. So if my fixed cost is a dollar forty-one, I'm making profit of a dollar and a half for every person. Then all I'm doing is going to say 141 people divided by a dollar and a half. 
and that's going to give me, let's see, 141 divided by 1.5. That's going to give me 94 people. I have to sell 94 meals. I got to hit 94 meals in order to break even. Now, that could be 94 customers coming and sitting down. That could be that that's all inclusive of people taking meals out and stuff like that. 94 meals is what I've got to do, okay? Now, this cut this problem is saying how many customers must come and eat so that I, I don't guess they're doing a, a takeout type thing is come in and sit down at. So, we got to have 94 people to come in that restaurant every single day to be able to keep it open. Okay? So that's that's how that problem works. Um, now, that is it. that is it for yes. these two sections. For these two sections. Oh wow! So, um, if there's, you need to get in and start doing some homework on those. Um, and and whatnot now remember that you have a test that opens this week uh it's chapter three's test it opens this week we uh code a lot of material uh i'll go back through the homework and and make sure that uh, some things are are taken care of i'm pretty sure i went through a lot of those uh i'll do the last section um to to uh Make sure I cover it. That's the one that I gave you the reference for the email uh, from what minutes to start and everything. Uh, there are a good bit of things that are, are kind of um, kind of removed in that section uh, because you you were doing horizontal shifts and ver uh, vertical shifts. Uh, we're not going to look at too much uh, horizontal compression or whatnot. Um, but we will look at it. Let me kind of give you this little bit of synopsis before we call it a night. Uh, you will, you know, y equals x squared. That's a quadratic, right? Uh, we do, uh, let's do this, ax plus bx plus c. Um, you'll need to know if a is greater than 1. It's a um, stretch vertically right it the it gets closer to the y-axis right and if the a is between zero and one then that's we call it that that is a, a, a shrink vertic uh, horizontally is what we kind of call that and that means it lays out more right um, and but we're only looking at that from a quadratic, and that's the only thing when uh, vertical or horizontal compression or stretching or whatnot. So uh, just kind of make sure I'll go through and make sure that those problems are kind of cold and not um, over complicated on the stretching and, and shrinking standpoint. Um, I think it, it's alluded to compression vertical. And horizontal compressions so uh, just kind of know that some of those problems will be gone but you're looking at strictly a quadratic okay so